Welcome to another Warframe tip of the day. Today I'll be showing you how to build the AMP 777. We seen in my last video we built an amazing AMP called 177. Today I'll be taking it another level and we'll be building a more advanced AMP 777. This AMP is built using the Clamora Prison, Propa Scaffold, and Certus Brace. All the pieces can be bought and farmed in Orb Valis on Fortuna Venus, making this ant farm a lot more easier than the other ant farms which you would be switching back and forth from the Quills and Cetus or Little Duck and Fortuna. This ant building will be focused with Little Duck and Fortuna. The unfortunate part of the build is that you need to level up standings with Little Duck or also known as Vox Solaris, which may take a little while considering it involves trading toroids for standings. You can also gain extra standings by gathering Narmor Isoplast, which is a resource that can be obtained through Narmor Bounties after completing the new war quest, and can be traded to the Fox Solaris Syndicates for 2,000 standings each, which may be a route you would like to take instead of Toroid farming for standings. Toroids are not easy to get or farm for. I mean, not easy for gathering, but also not easy in drop rates. Once you reach a certain reputation level by trading in Toroids, you will be able to buy these amp pieces. Toroids can be farmed a few different ways, as in defeating little mites called Arachnoids, rarely found throughout the Valis, which I don't recommend using this method for farming. It's more of a convenience. Or you can attempt to try the Profit Taker bounties, and different Toroids will be rewarded depending on which phase you decide to choose. The best method to get Toroids to drop is by defeating enemies. I recommend bringing a Warframe that has the ability to drop extra resources from enemies. One such Warframe, for example, is Necros. He has the ability to have enemies drop extra resources within a certain range. His ability is called Desecrate. When active, any enemies that get killed will have a chance to drop an extra loot. You can also try out Hydroid Equip with the mod Pilfering Swarm. This mod will have a drop chance for extra loot when enemies are affected by his tentacles. My last suggestion is to try out Korra equipped with the mod Pilfering Strangle Dome. This mod will have an extra drop chance when enemies are affected by her cage. If you're using the drops from enemies method, look out for beacons that enemies place in the ground. These beacons will increase the spawn rate of the enemies. There will be a display of dots next to your mini-map. The dots will fill in red when the alert goes higher. There are four different levels of alerts. You'll want the beacon to be at level four, so do not break the beacons. Keep one out to keep the alerts going. There are five different kinds of toroids to gather, and each toroids will drop in different locations within Orb Valis. We'll be focusing on gathering three out of the five toroids for this amp build, the Vega, Calda, and Sola toroid. They each drop in different locations throughout the Valis. Vega can drop at Spaceport, Calda is dropped at the Enrichment Lab, and Sola is dropped at the Temple of Prophet. If you're attempting to farm for the other two toroids, Chrisma and Lazulite, Crimson can be dropped from defeating the Prophet Taker. A detailed guide on how to defeat the Prophet Taker will be coming in the near future. Subscribe for notification or check back for a link in the description. Lazulite can be dropped from the Exploiter Orb. Check out my detailed video guide on how to solo the Exploiter Orb, or you can gather the information from the guide and defeat it faster with a squad. A link will be in the description. With this farm, you can easily gather Lazulite Torrids to trade in for 12,000 standings each with Little Duck. This Explorer Orb guide will help you easily max out your standings with Little Duck. This guide will be broken down in the chapter so you can pause and come back to it later. I'll be breaking down the amp piece by piece and show you where you can gather the required materials to build your amp. Let's start with a few required gear you need to build each piece. One required gear you will need is mining gear. Since we are only focused on mining in Orvalis, we will be buying our mining gear in Fortuna Venus. Head over to Smokefinger. Purchase a Sunpoint Plasma Drill. This drill will cost 2,500 standings and you can be ranked zero neutral with Utico or also known as Solaris United. Completely optional, but you can also purchase Sunpoint Plasma Drill widgets from Smokefinger. Two widgets are available for purchase. A Drill Silencer widget for 30,000 standings. This will let you mine in peace without alerting any enemies. Another widget you can purchase is the range widget for another 30,000 standings. This will increase the beam's range. If you're not familiar with mining or forget how to mine, here's a quick breakdown. When you get into an open world map, you will see red or blue glows on rocks or walls. These are called veins. Take out your drill from your gear wheel, look through the drill goggles, and you will see little spots on the vein. Point your drill laser beam at the spots and a mini game display will appear. Line up your line inside the brackets. If successful, you will get notification of the gem or ore you gathered. A few mining tips. When you pull out your drill, look on your mini map. Little rocks will appear. This will indicate where an ore or gem is located. On your drill goggle, to the right is a distance meter. This will indicate how far you are from a gem or ore. 
Last, you can listen to see how far you are from a mining location. The beeps will get faster the closer you are to a mining spot. Next, you'll need fishing gear, also in Fertina. Head over to the business, purchase the Shock Prod Fishing Spear for 500 standings, and you can also be ranked zero neutral with Solaris United. We'll be fishing for Tramuzon and Orb Valis. All three amp pieces will require Tramuzon fishing. While at the business, you can also purchase Tramuzon bait. This is bought for 300 standings each and must be ranked doer with Solaris United. This is not required, but suggested. Tramuzon fish will spawn without bait. The bait will give it a higher spawn chance though. There are also two more suggested gear you can purchase to make fishing easier, and that's having the ability to see the fish. You can illuminate the fish with either using a die or a companion. The die is called Luminous Die. This die is bought back over in Cetus on Earth from Fisher High Luck for 100 standings each. Luminous Die will illuminate the fish, making it easier for you to see. This die is timed and will run out, so make sure to buy extra. The next option to illuminate the fish is using the Oxyless Companion with the mod equipped called Scan Aquatic Lifeforms. This companion will always illuminate the fish and reveal hotspots on your mini map with a fish icon. Check out my video on how to get the Oxyless. A link will be in the description. Hotspots have a glowing aura over the water. Some fish will only spawn in hotspots or spawn more frequently in hotspots. I've only gotten Tramuzons to appear inside hotspots and not outside. If you're not familiar with fishing or need a refreshment, here's a quick breakdown. When you get to a fishing location, pull out your spear from your gear wheel. A fishing equipment option will display on the bottom right side of your screen. You will see your fishing rod selection, bait selection, and gear selection. With the corresponding buttons, open up your fishing spear options and pick which spear you want to use. Next, open your bait menu and pick a bait. You can now throw it into the water. Bait is timed, so keep an eye on your bait, which can be easily seen by a glow. Last is your gear option, which contains your luminous die. When selected, you can throw this into the water. Now you just wait until the fish appear. For this waiting purpose, I bring a Warframe that can go invisible. Loki or Avera have the ability to go invisible to enemies. There will be plenty of times where enemies will bother you while you're trying to fish or end up spawning right next to you. Becoming invisible makes fishing a whole lot easier. When you see the fish you want, throw the spear at it. When you successfully catch the fish, a trophy cutscene will play. Most blueprints require fish to be gutted to get the material you need. Visiting the Fisher Traders, such as Fisher High Luck on Cetus, the Business in Fortuna, or the Daughter in Deimos, and select Option to Cut Fish. Select the fish you want to cut, and a display will appear of the different materials that will drop when cut. In this guide, we will need Tramuzon Entroplasma. This is a material given when a Tramuzon is caught and then cut. When you have all these required gear, don't forget to equip them in your gear wheel. The drill will need to be equipped, and your shock prod spear will need to be equipped if you don't already have a spear in your gear wheel. The die and bait do not need to be equipped. If you're using the Oxyless Companion, don't forget to equip that also into your companion slot. Before you start farming for these amp pieces, make sure to set your gameplay to solo. You will be mining and fishing, so if you set your gameplay to public, your squad mates might not know your itinerary and they may activate objectives that might hinder your farming. Let's go over each amp piece and how to build it. First, let's start with the Clamora Prism. This prism has a short range wide angle shot. The Clamora Prism is bought from Little Duck and Fortuna Venus. The blueprint sells for 3000 standings and you must be rank instrument with Little Duck. The following materials are required. Vega Toroids, Radian Zodian, Gyromag Systems, and Tromuzon Entroplasma. Vega Toroids are dropped in an area called Spaceport in Orvalis Venus. This resource is dropped by defeating enemies in the required location. Bring your farming Warframe. If available, use a resource booster to give you two Toroids every time you pick up one. And be prepared to wait a very long time for Toroids to drop. Make sure to get an alert beacon started and level it up to 4. This will spawn more enemies. If you just linked to this chapter, check out the section on how to get Toroids. A more detailed explanation is given in the beginning of this guide. Radiant Zodian is mined from the gem Zodian. Zodian is located inside Orvalis and will be a blue vein. Radiant Zodian Blueprint is sold from Smokefinger and Fortuna Venus for 8,000 standings and you must be ranked doer with Solaris United. You then go back to your foundry and build the gem. You can also gather this gem by defeating the Exploiter Orb. The Exploiter Orb has around a 50% job chance right at the end of the mission when a long list of rewards pop up after defeating it. Check out my guide on how to defeat the Exploiter Orb. Within the guide, I show you how I defeat it solo. And once you have the method down, you can use this method to gather the required gems for the amp. A link will be in the description. Gyromag systems can be obtained a couple different ways. The easiest way to obtain it is to buy it from Little Duck and Fortuna. 
Gyro Mag Systems is sold for 1,000 standings each and you must be ranked hand with Vox Solaris. If you're not ranked up enough to buy it, you can obtain it by performing heist bounty missions given in Little Duck's room at the briefing table. To unlock these bounties, you must be ranked Old Mate with Solaris United. Pick a bounty where the system is dropped as a possible reward. The last required material to build a prism is Tramiazon Entroplasma. Tramiazon is a fish that is caught in Orvalis, Venus, in ponds during the cold weather. I'll show you my favorite pond location. Follow my waypoint, which is located south of Vertuna. You can see if it's cold weather by opening up your detailed mini map and looking at the bottom right hand corner of the screen. You can use Tramiazon bait to help spawn more fish, but it is only suggested. I managed to find the fish without using bait, however, I've only managed to get the fish to spawn inside hotspots, not outside. You can also gather Tramiazon Entroplasma by defeating the Explorator Orb as a reward for defeating the final phase. You can gather the gem Zodian and Tramiazon fish at the same time by using the Explorator Orb farming method. Next, let's gather resources to build the Profus Scaffold. The Profus Scaffold throws out explosives. You can purchase a blueprint from Little Duck in Fortuna Venus for 3,000 standings and you must be rank instrument with Vox Solaris. You need to gather Caudatorates, Hesmozyme Alloy, Atmos Systems, and Tramuzon Entroplasma. Caudatorates can be dropped in Orvalis on Venus at the Enrichment Lab area. Enemies to fear in this area will have a small drop chance to drop this particular toroid. I also suggest using a resource booster. This will drop two toroids instead of one. Since toroids are a very rare resource to gather, getting two for the price of one is well worth it. There's no best place to camp for this farm though. Enemies can spawn anywhere. The best way to spawn enemies more frequently is by using the enemies alert beacon and getting it up to stage four. All this information is gathered in detail if you go back to the section in the beginning of the guide talking about toroid farming. A link will be in the description. Next, we'll be gathering resources to make the required material Hespazyme Alloy. This alloy's blueprint is bought from Smokefinger in Fortuna for 4,000 standings, and you must be ranked to Rep Scallion with Solaris United. The material needed to build Hespazyme Alloy is an ore called Hesperon. The ore is mined from red veins. When you get enough Hesperon, go back to your foundry and build the Hesmazign Alloy Blueprint under the Mining Options. Another required resource for the scaffold is Atmos System. The easiest way to obtain this is by buying it from Little Duck and Fortuna for 2500 standings and you must be rank hand with Vox Solaris. This resource is also rewarded after completing heist bounties from a briefing table in Little Duck's room. These are profit taker bounties and they can be unlocked by becoming Old Mate with Solaris United. Check out the reward tables and choose which bounty you want to complete. Last material gathered is Tramizon Entroplasm and just like the Clamora prison, Tramizon is a fish that is caught in Orvalis Venus in ponds during the cold weather. I'll show you my favorite pond location. Follow my waypoint, which is located south of Fortuna. The easiest way to figure out if it's cold or warm weather is open up your detailed map and look at the bottom right hand corner of your screen. It will show you whether it's going to be cold or warm. You can use Tramiazon bait to help spawn more fish, but it is only suggested. I managed to find the fish without using bait. However, I've only managed to get the fish to spawn inside hotspots and not outside. You can also gather Tramiazon Entroplasma by defeating the Explorator Orb as a reward for defeating the final phase. The last piece of the amp to build is the Certus Brace, which grants an additional critical hit chance. The blueprint is bought from Little Duck in Fortuna Venus for 3,000 standings and he must be rank instrument with Vox Solaris. The materials needed to gather to build it are Solatoroids, Marquis Thist, Repeller Systems, and Tramuzon Entroplasma. Solatoroids can be dropped in Orvalis on Venus at the Temple of Prophet. Enemies defeated in this area will have a small chance to drop this particular toroid. Here I'm using the Warframe Necros with the ability Desecrate Active. I also suggest using a Resource Booster. This will drop two toroids instead of one. Since toroids are a very rare resource to gather, getting two for the price of one is well worth it. There is no best place to camp for this farm though. Enemies can spawn anywhere. The best way to spawn enemies more frequently is by using the enemies alert beacon and getting it up to stage four. All this information is gathered in detail if you go back to the section in the beginning of the guide talking about toroid farming. A link will be in the description. Marquis Thist is a rare gem mined in Norvalis on Venus. 
The blueprint is bought from Smokefinger in Fortuna for 12,000 standings and he must be ranked Cove with Solaris United. The blueprint requires the gem Thys to be mined. This can come out of blue veins and is very rare to find. You might have a better chance of finding Thys by defeating the Exploiter Orb. There will be a 50% job trance as a reward after defeating the final phase. You can follow my guide on how to defeat the Exploiter Orb. A link will be in the description. The guide will give you a good understanding on how to defeat it quick and easy. Last material gathered is Charmizon Entroplasma. And just like the Clamora Prism and Propus Scaffold, Charmizon is a fish that is caught in Orb Phallus, Venus, in ponds during the cold weather. I'll show you my favorite pond location. Follow my waypoint, which is located south of Fortuna. You can also see if it's cold or warm weather by opening up your detailed map and looking at the bottom right hand corner. You can use Charmizon bait to help spawn more fish, but it is only suggested. I managed to find a fish without using bait. However, I've only managed to get the fish to spawn inside hotspots, not outside. You can also gather Tramiazon Entroplasma by defeating the Explorer Orb as a reward for defeating the final phase. You can use the Explorer Orb method to gather most of your amps materials for all three pieces. When you finish gathering all your amps materials, head back into your foundry. Select the amp pieces, Clamora Prism, Propus Scaffold, and Certus Brace. Building these pieces will take one hour. Once all these pieces are ready in the foundry, go back over to Little Duck and Fortuna Venus. Select the option to build amp. Select the pieces. Build the amp and then go back to your ship. Go into your operator and select equipment and select the amp you just built. Now you need to level it up. You can level it up the same way you level up anything else. I also suggest using an infinity booster to help level it up faster. The easiest way to get an infinity booster is by going into any relay and waiting. If a level 30 has come into the relay, they have the option to gift affinity boosters to anybody that's already in the relay. The affinity booster will be at least three hours, which is enough time to level anything up. After it reaches level 30, head back to Little Duck and guild the amp. This will make it stronger. After you guild it, the amp will then go back down to level zero. You will need to re-level it up to 30 again. Then it's good to go. And there you have it, another Warframe tip of the day. If this tip helped you, please leave a comment below, like, and hit that thanks button. Subscribe to the channel for more Warframe farming guides, and I'll see you again for more Warframe tips of the day.